um, welcome to our next lecture. Um, so here we want to look at the special cases, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, special case of end roots. So in this case, we want to look at the key roots of unity. Okay, and I said unity just means one. So you have the number one, z is equal to the complex number is one, we want to find the key roots of one. Okay. Now one, we can write one as you know a modulus of one, of course, times you have cosine of of course, cosine of zero is one, right? And then sine of zero is zero. So this, of course, is zero. Cos of zero is one, and one is one. So you have one. So you can actually write one as this, where the modulus r is equal to one, and then the argument, of course, is just equal to zero. So to find the roots, the key roots, so we are expecting three. To find the key roots of this, we can apply the formula that we used before. Now, instead of W, we can use Z now, okay, as in the notes. Uh, ZK or WK will be the um, F root, the Q root, and the three, okay? And then, of course, R is one, cosine of N, cosine of theta plus two by K. Theta is zero plus two pi k all over n, n is three, okay? Plus i sine of theta is zero plus two pi k all over n, n is three again, all right? So of course this, we can simplify this. I'll give you the values of k very soon. This is all one. So basically we are left a cosine of two pi k over three, this is k, plus i, Sine of um, 2 pi k all over 3. Okay, excuse me. All over 3. Okay, uh, so our roots are given by this way. K, of course, we'll take the value 0, 1, and 2. We want the Q roots, so n is 3. We should end up n minus 1. Okay, so just plug in the values of k and you have the 3 Q roots. So when k is 0, Z zero will basically be equal to, of course, cosine of zero, uh, which is one, sine of zero is zero. So the first root is this. Z one will be equal to, when k is one, I'm going to have cosine of two pi over three plus pi sine of two pi over three. I have a second root. The third root, Z two, will be equal to, multiply by two, that gives you cosine of four pi over three plus i sine of four pi over three. Again, we notice that you know, this is more than a pi. So this you can rewrite, right? If you take four pi over three minus two pi, that gives you, let's say six, so this is negative two pi over three. See that? So you can also rewrite this as cosine of negative 2 pi by 3, but cosine is the same thing, but this is a minus i sine of 2 pi by 3. Okay? So, z0, z1, z2 basically gives us the three key roots of unity of the number 1. So, these are the roots. Okay? Good. Now, why, why is this uh, important? All right, why, do we, why are we concerned about the key roots of unity? It has some very important, well, very interesting properties, okay? So on an other, other diagram, for instance, on a complex plane, right, where this is our uh, real and imaginary uh, axis, of course, as we mentioned before, they all have the same modulus, which is one, all right? It means they lie in a circle. But the radius of the circle is one. The radius is one because the modulus is one. So the roots lie on a circle of radius one. If you like a unit circle, okay? Uh, this has you know modulus of one. The argument is zero. So if it lies along here, so z one is if you like this vector here, which is on this, z zero is here. The next one has an angle of two pi over 
degree, it's like 120 degrees, right? So it's somewhere here, along here. So Z1 is this. And then Z2 is 4 pi over 3, or if you like negative 2 pi over 3. So if you like negative 120, so which is somewhere there. So Z2 is here. See? And the equal space in terms of the arguments. Alright? And the difference in the arguments is just 2 pi over, over 3. See that? The argument is 0. So 2 pi over 3 minus 0 is 2 pi. This is 4 pi over 3. If I subtract this, I get 2 pi over 3. So the difference, alright? Difference in argument. So let's get rid of this. So the first thing is the line of the circle. Okay? So first thing, the line on the circle of radius 1. Okay, uh, argument, argument separated. They are separated by pi over 2 pi over 3. Okay, we'll come back to this test later on. But um, we also see something interesting. So, note this Z2, okay, Z2 is equal to uh, this, right? Uh, we can use this one. So if you are going to use this, know that this is cosine of 4 pi over 3 plus i sine of 4 pi over 3. Note I can also rewrite this in an interesting way. This can be written as cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine of 2 pi over 3 all squared. You see that? From here, if I apply the Morris theorem, Right? If I square this, I just have to take the power multiplied by this. So two times this will give you that. Give you that. So this is the same as this. But what is this term in brackets? If you go back here, you notice that what is in brackets here is z1. Okay? So this is equal to actually z1 squared. Okay? So this implies that z2 can be written as z1 all of it squared. Okay, now also note this. Note how you can write uh, Z1. Okay, note that we wrote Z1 to be, um, to be equal to um, this number here, right? So let me get rid of, um, let me get rid of this, okay? Uh, I want to leave this, I'll come back to this. We can write Z1 as this. Know that sine and cosine are multiples of 2 pi, right? So if I take 2 pi over 3 and I subtract 2 pi from me, what do I get? I'm going to have, let's say, negative 6 and this is negative 4 pi over 3. So instead of 2 pi over 3, I can actually use negative 4 pi over 3. So this, I can also write as cosine of 4 pi over 3. This is a minus sine of 4 pi over 3. But this I can also rewrite, note, as cosine, like I did for this, 2 pi over 3 minus i, 2 pi over 3, and I can square it. Because if I square this, this just multiplies, and I'm back to this. But if you go back to what we wrote down, you notice that whatever is in brackets here, cos 2 pi over 3 minus i sine 2 pi over 3 is actually z2. Okay? So all of this is z2 squared, which implies that I can also write z1 as the square of the square of z2. Okay. So you can only get this in complex numbers, right? We said that z2 is equal to z1 squared. Alright? But we have also just proven that z1 is also equal to z2 squared. Okay, so that is some interesting property with the cube roots of, um, of unity, okay? So all what this means is this. I, once I have the zero one, which is one, that is, that is fine, that's not that interesting. But if I get any one of them, either Z1 or Z2, I can get the other one by just squaring the, um, the previous one. If I have Z1, I can get Z2 by squaring Z1. If I have Z2, I can get Z1 by just squaring Z2. 
Okay, so that is how interesting these are. Okay, so if I get rid of these, then this fourth, this fourth point tells us that if if um if W is a root, it's a complex, if you like, a complex root of unity. Okay, root of unity. All right, then W two is the next the next root. Right. Excuse me. So that which implies that um, the cube roots, which implies that the cube roots, cube roots of unity. Okay. Of unity are basically one. If this is one of them, the next one will just be the square of it. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I can get one of it, then to get another one, I just square it. So that is how um, interesting, um, interesting these these are. Good. Now the fourth point of view, I think fourth. The fourth point is this. So I'm back to this diagram. Okay, we saw that. Um, the cube roots of unity lie in a circle, all right? They are equally spaced. Um, they have the same modulus. The difference in the argument is just 2 pi over 3, all right? Now, you notice that the vectors, okay, the vectors that form this, okay, can be added up in an interesting way. Note that this, you know, go back to add additional vectors. This can be extended backward this way, right? Like this is the same as the vector that's going this way. This guy here is this. Is this vector here? Okay. So this is also z is z one. This guy going this way is z naught. Okay. So they form an equilateral triangle. The vectors. The vectors for the cube roots. Cube roots. Cube roots of unity form an equilateral, equilateral, equilateral triangle. Okay, which I can, you know, I can get it out of this. So this they form, you know, an equilateral triangle just like that, right? Where this guy, if you like, is our Z1. This going here is Z0. And then this guy going up here is our Z1. Okay? Now, if you go back to you know, additional vectors, you see that oh, this is 2, Z2. This vector, Z2, for instance, will be equal to, to get this vector, I need to come this way, come this way. Right? So this is equal to the negative of z1 and then the negative of z0 that will give me s which implies that if I bring all of these to this side I get z0 plus z1 plus z2 is equal to 0 see so we are back to the original thing we started with that when you add the roots of a complex number alright they all add up to 0 and that is because you know they form the side of um, of um, a regular polygon, okay, and that is how we are using this surface to show. So basically, uh, that is the cube root of unity, okay, um, and it may have some very interesting properties. In the next lecture, we want to we want to broaden it and look at the nth root of unity, not just the cube root, the nth root of unity. So it will still be unity, but the root will be the nth root, and then we'll look at some properties of that. So. Okay, so see you in the um, our next lecture.